Okay, I forgot to turn on. Sorry for that. Um, so uh, this was PCB basically uh, for my uh, robot. Uh, this allow me to control uh, egg servo. So egg servo uh, with um, um, spider-like movement. So this one. So this is basically my own custom bot PCB. Okay, so and actually I can just produce this a lot and I can sell this online, but I don't have enough time to do that. So there's a lot of other things that there's a lot of other projects that I'm doing. And so, yeah, just to give you idea. And this is, again, this is an open source software uh, called Freightzing. Uh, I do have the older version. So if you want to, maybe later I can share with you the software. Uh, but the latest version seems kind of like um, problems with the, uh, with the compilation. So I'm, I'm having uh, been able to, to run them. But the older version seems still, still working OK. All right, so it is very simple to use. Um, so I might need to change that to VIN or 5 volt or external power supply. So as long as you can provide 5 volt, it should be OK. Um, so that's basically for a uh, sensor, OK? Um, so basically, basically written 1 and 0, so um, high and low. So I did mention about the high and low for ESP. Uh, next, uh, this is uh, uh, this is another sorry. This is output. Okay, this is really is an output component. So when we talk about uh, microcontroller, we talk about sensors. Uh, this is basically you 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 are not going. Um, you you basically still in input process output. Okay, input process output. So when we talk about input, input is something like a keyboard, a keypad, um, anything that you can input to the microcontroller. And the microcontroller will the one will, will, will do all the processing, okay? Because it's a computer, it's a computer on its own. So and then you need to know the result. So you need a way to know okay, what basically the output from what you already input. So one of it is relay. Like for example, like this one. Um, this is what we call as a relay. This blue one. So it comes in many flavor. So many uh, type of uh, relay. Uh, the one that I have here is called a mechanical relay. Okay, so this is mechanical relay. This blue one here is called mechanical relay. So what this relay can do is that this relay can shut down light, uh, can shut down, turn on and turn off um, um, whatever electronic uh, 240 DC uh, AC. You, you can control AC, you can control DC also with this. Okay, means that this is actually a switch. What do you call it? Mechanical switch on and off okay on and off so you can combine uh you can combine this sensor here and this sensor basically when you detected something so you give the instruction to turn on this relay so this relay now if you like someone come into the room and then uh your sensor this sensor basically detected someone inside the room and then turn on the relay and the relay basically connected to like yeah whatever that you want but you have to hack your your way into uh the electrical uh, system the house or your room or whatever that we have you here so you can turn it on okay so this is a really a very uh useful uh, output component because this will output things okay so you output you have this input and then you can combine with another one with this one for example to output things so this output basically just set digital right uh to low and then it will turn on uh, get the right to high, it will turn off, high and low, reverse, okay? So uh, it basically comes with three pins also, two for power, and this one fortunately can run on 3.3 volt, so it means that you can just connect to any of your 3.3 uh, pins, and you have in for digital, uh, digital in, okay? So digital in means that you can just give the instruction on and off, that's it, just on and off switch, all right? So very simple one. Um, so let's try to, to have this on and off, really switch. So this is basically, um, there are so many companies, there's so many um, factory uh, that, that built this, that, that assembled this. Uh, the one that I have here called Tongling. So this is basically, uh, obviously comes from China, factory. Uh, and this one, I'm not quite sure. This is Songle, mm, believe from China also. So most of the product coming from there. Um, and this one can support 250. So 250, you can see clearly up there. Uh, it can also be used with, uh, but this one, 5 volt input. 
but the one that I have here is a 3.3 .3 volt. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this one can be can be used also with uh, EC 125 and also uh, EC 250 volt. So there are two types. I hope you understand about AC DC. Some understanding in how electronic electric uh, electric work should be should be there already with you. Like right? in Malaysia, we use 240. Uh, in US, you use 120. Okay, so so here we we use 240 in Malaysia, uh, and then um, and then you can uh, use any electrical equipment that use uh, 10 amp or less, 10 uh, 10 ampere. Okay, ampere. So you need also to understand the concept of amperage, basic concept of uh, amperage. If you learn this uh, in your high school, I think uh, your physics subject. Anyone here taking physics or did right? you you remember your ampere? Like uh, VIR, so those are the basic, the fundamental that you should already learn. All right. Okay. So this is basically where you apply. Okay. So you apply things. All right. So for really, there are two type. Uh, not two type, but two operations. Either you have like NC operation, normally close or normally open. So normally close means that it's always close, and then uh, whenever uh, you give the instruction to turn off, uh, to turn on, it will open. If you connect it to normally open, it will basically open. If you give instruction to turn on, it will connect. So this is just on on off switch. So you can choose either one. It depends on how you want the system to be operated. Uh, but you have to understand this is a uh, mechanical. Okay, this is mechanical relay. It means that there's a mechanical magnet uh, inside the relay here. Uh, when the uh, relay turn on or turn off, you will hear a click inside. Click, click, click. So it means that. The, there's a magnet inside there that, that on and off, okay? It will touch and uh, release. Okay. Um, so this is basically the simple uh, diagram uh, design that you can, you, can, you can have with this. Um, so again, just use your node MCU and you can see 3.3 .3 volt uh, ground to power uh, two of the pins, the power pin, and one of the pins uh, for data, digital, so this is digital, basically digital out. So you just set the digital out to on and off, high or low. And here, this is where you connected uh, your uh, your equipment. Okay, so, but this one, you have to be very careful because handling 240 uh, EC power can be very, very dangerous. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not going to uh, responsible for this if some of you like get shocked or just keras kat situ saja. I have nothing to do with that. So be very careful if you really um, into this, but I've done this so many times already and definitely I get shot a lot, but you have to be very careful. Okay. Burn a lot, shock a lot. That's basically the life of um, IOT, not so-called engineer, but for those who live in this kind of, um, of, of environment. Burn a lot, my hand, my finger here burn a lot due to soldering. Sometimes, like I miss my soldering, and then here and there burn. Okay, my tip of my finger here, you can see like so many scar already there. Even like with three D printer, also if you're if you're not familiar with three D printer, also three D printer burn me a lot, also. So, but that's the life that I choose from. All right, okay, so very simple one. Um, to do this again, there's another code there, uh, and this code basically just uh, write high and low. But this one, uh, this one uh, can be quite dangerous, not dangerous, but will turn on and off your relay for five seconds and low, uh, and uh, five seconds, then you will keep on looping and looping and looping. You will hear the click, the click sound all the time. So let's see uh, if you can do that uh, quickly. I forgot to upload your, your the code to my Git, but I, I'm going to do it today. All right, so as simple as that, um, fire up your Arduino. By now, you already seen uh, the flow, okay? So whenever um, I have like small project, new project, um, run your Arduino um, IDE, create new sketch, uh, make sure you have the design already. So this is basically the design, okay? This is basically the design, as simple as it can be. Uh, but Definitely, uh, there's a like a proper design. This is just um, a visual design, which is very easy to understand. Basically, clearly show you all the cables connection. But there are steps that I remove from the uh, from from the real uh, process, which is 
the um, what do you call it uh, the, the, the 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 real design in electronic, which sometimes for those who are not familiar can be quite uh, you cannot easily understand that. So uh, I just use a simple one, a simple uh, diagram, because if you look at the the hold on, printing. So I need to switch the one. There's a okay. This is a breadboard view. Okay, so breadboard view you can just uh, you can just drag, drop, drag, drop. Uh, this is the schematic. So this is basically where you design your component and everything, but it will look weird for you. Like for example, like uh, what did I have here? See this one. The schematic okay like this one i i haven't yet properly arranged this but you will see things like this okay but this is a schematics view uh, i'm not going to go into schematics uh in this class because this will require uh electronic engineering understanding uh, i'm not going to go into this so i jump straight to pcb so this is basically more logical uh, for you because this is uh, some things that you can just um, view and then you can see the things uh, in real um, design okay but here this is basically the schematics that usually uh, electronic engineer look at and you don't have to for now for this subject i'm not training you to become electronic engineer uh, this is basically for you to learn the basic but if you really want to learn into this you should go to the schematics um, and learn proper uh, electronics um, here we just use uh, off the shelf uh, electronic component all right uh, and then uh, that's uh, the, the schematics uh, so i skip the schematic purposely because of um, the complexity uh, that, that will incur to you all right so um so now i'm going to create a new one so this is pir so pir also a very simple one i'm going to create new just control n and then paste this so uh define d0 so it means that i use d0 so you can see uh, from the board so the d0 is the on top so but usually i didn't use d0 much because d0 they are directly connected to uh, led so you can choose other digital you can use d3 you can use d4 or even you can use this uh, d5 d6 it doesn't matter as long as your connection directly connected to that uh, let me just pick up one. It's easier. I'm here. It's big party. Okay, so this is lazy. I'm quite lazy to connect to 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 that board. Um, so this is the, the in your from your last class. So this is the sensor. Okay, like dome quite dome sensor that able to detect um, uh, infrared light, uh, infrared um, heat. Our body generate infrared, so any heated body will generate infrared. Okay, so you understand about how infrared works, right? So any infrared uh, produced by any heated body. If you don't have infrared um, that they call like aura, right? they call it aura, that's basically infrared. It's not aura, okay, infrared. So if you don't have infrared, it means that you're dead already. Okay, because your body didn't produce any heat anymore. Okay, so you're no longer alive. So you're basically unalive. So connection, connection. So it is easier if you have like uh, this kind of color, uh, red, black, and signal. Okay, so you always like this. You have power line here, and then you have the signal line. Okay, so uh, signal can be you can choose any of the pins that you have here. Uh, but uh, if you want to connect to more, so you have to have more. So that's why it is good idea to have more of this. Okay, so this one very cheap, like three ringgit, four ringgit. You can get like 40, 40 uh, of this. 
I, I think like three ringgit, four ringgit, right? Okay. So yeah, again, you you might need to uh, invest more in this kind of uh, subject. And yeah, I just received a confirmation from the school that we don't have final exam for this class. No final exam. They've changed that the, this subject based on my request not to have this subject uh, with final exam. Um, since nobody else can teach this subject, so they have to listen to me. <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> so whatever that I say, they will follow. <laughs> That's basically how it is, right? They want me to teach, then you have to listen to me what I want. <laughs> okay, so uh, now I'm going to change this to the relay. All right, so again, follow the same process, but be very careful, right? Um, if your eyes are still good, so it means that you can just easily see the number, the, 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 the we call it silk screen silk screen pin, uh, print so the d0 d1 so you can you, you have good eyes should be no problem like mine i cannot see that i can see like blue everything so i need this so be very careful so make sure that when you connect all this pin right so you have to be sure like this one is 3.3 .3. this one is ground so this cable is ground cable so make sure that you connect it to the correct pin okay properly so you have to confirm double confirm don't reverse so if you reverse sometimes like if certain um component they don't have a reverse circuit uh, circuitry means that uh your component will be, will burn because you provide positive to ground ground to positive if they don't have like diode we call it diode that that protect the circuit okay a diode you, you learned about electronic before you're familiar with electronic. You have background in diploma in electronics. Oh, good. All right. So it should be like child play for you. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have to protect the secretary if you don't have that. But this one they do have. I I believe so. Yeah. So it means that if you reverse, nothing will happen. But your your device won't work. Okay. But just be very careful not to reverse your current your voltage positive and negative so that's why it is recommended to have color coded cable so that you know that okay this is ground for ground black always for ground red always for positive or 3v3 3v3 means that 3.3 voltage and esp outputted 3.3 volt because of the regulator that they have up here so the big one here called a power regulator voltage regulator step down it will step down from 5.5 uh, 5 uh, 5 volt to 3.3 .3 volt it is lower the voltage uh, through this regulator okay this is a regulator uh, this is am11117 i believe yeah that's the that's the pin that's the component number yeah i do have a lot of this okay one am one so this is very good regulator it basically can output it um to 100 uh, 300 milliampere should be okay. So we have three port here that allow us to connect to component. Uh, but if you don't have, uh, but if you have more than uh, three, you can use you can use the power line here. There's a power line here to this. So the up, uh, the the top and bottom down here. This is power line. So it's basically connected. So all the pins, all the pins up here, uh, the uh, negative pins, they all connected one line. So you can just connect 3.3 .3 volt to uh, to the positive and uh, ground to ground. So it means that all the top bottom uh, the top and bottom down here, if you connect it, uh, will get 3.3 .3 volt and ground. So it is easier. But if you do it something like this, you can only have three. Okay, maximum three. So if you connect it to this, uh, the top and bottom down are up there, and then you just need to 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 jump a cable. Uh, 3.3 .3 to positive, ground to ground. It means that you can connect as many as you can, but you have to understand uh, the maximum uh, milliampere that it can it, it can support. I think 200 milliampere only. So most of the sensor they can run like 50 milliampere, um, 100 milliampere, uh, but anything more than that, when you total them up, do not exceed 200. 
Yeah, two hundred is already much. You're already pushing your microcontroller. Your microcontroller will get hot. Okay, if you try to draw much M from from this microcontroller, and usually, um, if you really want to have like a stable connection, you might need to have like external power supply. So the external power supply can comes from the uh, like the one that I have here. This is an external EMS uh, AM one one seven. So we I do have this, and then this one basically I connected to battery, connected to a battery. And then connect to another AMS. Uh, but this one, uh, this one, I think this one is higher, higher voltage, uh, higher ampere. So you can support more, uh, more component. Okay, but that for later. I just learn the basic first. Okay, learn the basic. This one will require more understanding. And even I use the mini five six zero step down. Uh, but this one I can provide three M, I believe, if I remember. So three ampere is. Uh, able to drive servo because servo they, they require a lot of ampere to run if you're under load okay if running under load like servo like the one that i have this is my robot here so this this is uh this basically this require eight servo to run. This is all metal gear servo, which require more ampere to run. Okay, so um, I need higher uh, ampere uh, modules, which able to drive all the servo. If I just depend everything on this board, this board definitely will die. Okay, so you have to understand about power, uh, voltage, ampere, total ampere, so those are the things that, that you need to understand. But it's basically just very logical. Okay, logical means that, okay, like for this one, it will draw only like 50 milliampere. Okay, like this one will draw like, so, but that's why it is very important for you to read the specification. Okay, read the specification first. Don't skip. You have to understand, read them first, and then you can see like, okay, how many ampere will draw by this? Okay. And then you can just total up. Oops, okay. My microcontroller can only support up to 200 milliampere. But this one is already draw 300 milliampere, which is beyond the capacity, the capability of the microcontroller. So you might need to consider to, to, to run this on external power supply instead of depending on this uh, power coming from here. Okay. So specification is very, very important for you to, to read first. Don't just plug in and then just use them and throw away the, the documentation like we do all, all the time. When you buy new things and then you don't even read whatever the, the, the things that comes with the device and then straight away turn on and then, okay, very important. Okay, read the specification first. All right. Put it away, put it away. And this one with the relay. So really ground VCC. So we have ground and the site here also like the one that I have up, up here. It's easier to make it closer. Okay. So we know that this is positive. So connect to positive, uh, which is VCC. VCC, sometimes they call VCC. Sometimes they call 3V3. Sometimes they call e, um, uh, just plus. So yeah. You have to understand all the label also. So this one is ground, put it to ground. And this is zero. D zero is a pin 16. So pin 16 is the top bottom, uh, the top uh, of this microcontroller and put D zero to in. Right. Okay, so now they are connected. So you need your USB cable. Make sure it is a data cable. And then connect to your USB and make sure no metal object near your microcontroller, um, your hand dry. If you have like um, your hand always wet, so keep your towel or whatever that dry your hand first. Okay, because kalau tangan awak basah, garam. Peluh is garam, right? So garam is good conductor so you touch them burn okay so now you can connect 
okay um and then you can save every time you create a new project you need to save your project first okay because this one i've created new project uh if i want to compile it will try to compile but usually you cannot compile you need to save them first now usually you need to, uh, you need to, to save them but i'm not quite sure if the latest version allow you to do that usually i just use the old version 1.8 but i just updated to version 2.1 but usually you need to save them. Okay, go to your um, where you want to store your project. Uh, this one is Arduino. Not under OneDrive folder. It's always go there. I don't want my OneDrive. OneDrive always messing with my. Okay, here. This is uh, um, this one. So I'm going to put it here. Really. Example with any names. All right, so now you need to choose your bot. This is bot three again, don't MCU 1.0. Right, press OK. Okay, so you can see here this is a D0. Um, it started with serial begin. Serial begin, there's no need if you don't put uh put any serial print out. But if you want to, you can, but if there's no serial print, you don't have to. Because this uh, instruction basically just to start your serial uh, communication. So you can just turn off if you don't want to. There's no need if you just want to see the output here. Uh, and then you can just upload. This one will do like five second um, delay. Okay. Oh, I forgot to, but it should be okay. Lah. High, low, high, low, high, low. So you put another one delay down there. Because the relay is going like going crazy, like five second on, five second off. Top, 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 top. Okay, but you'll see the, the, the effect. Okay, you should be able to hear. Oh, it basically turned on very quickly. I need to put one more. Five seconds, and then should be five seconds, high, low, high, low. Is it D0, right? D0. Your D0. And that one is uh, in. The light should be on and off. This one high, high is low, low is high. Yeah. Okay, you can hear the, the, the sound coming. Top, five second. Top, five second. Thumb. This this one running at ten seconds. Supposed to hear that. Is it my my relay is not working. It's supposed to be working already because the light is on. The light is on because this one D zero is connected to LED. When the light is on, it's supposed to. It should be okay lah. Sebab dia running tu. Di high. Ha, tu lah. Bila dia color biru, maksudnya dia running. Sebab dia LED eh. Saya tukar ke pin lain lah. Kadang-kadang pin ni dia dia kacau. Eh. So, saya akan cuba ambil ke pin 4. Saya perlu lupa ESP8266 pin out. Referen. Kadang D tu dia kacau. So, kita ambil D lain. Kita ambil zero pun boleh. D3. So, DZ, this one is D3 which is a pin out zero. So, kita ambil D3. Okay, so this one is D3. Sorry. This one is D3. D3. Satu high, satu low, dia patut ditunggu. Oops, sorry. This one also one more. Oh God. So this is the thing with uh, hardware programming because you need to wait a lot of time. Okay. Every changes that you introduce to the code, you have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait to see the result. Uh, you're right. So I've changed this to D3. 
This one is D3, D0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, 3. So every time you, you will rewrite the your flash uh, memory. It's supposed to turn on and off. And the LED should blink. It's a very fast high and low. My delay didn't seem to work, but you can see the sound there. It's supposed to delay like five seconds, but it didn't delay at all. You can see the light is on and off. What I'm sure I didn't. Let me put a serial sat. What is that not on and off in, in that sense? Then I'm going to let no serial serial dot oops, what is it? Print line. This one is high. And then this one supposed to be low. It's supposed to delay five seconds, but why I didn't wait for the oh, sorry. Serial, serial begin. Is it the S capital? Got already. My because I'm I'm in the Python mode at the moment. I'm writing another Python project. So switching to C back. So as with capital letter. We're supposed to do that. We're supposed to light on, light off, light on, light off. But the relay does, doesn't seem to properly work in this sense. Why it didn't wait for this five second delay is means that wait. Five second on. Five second off. But it didn't seem to respond that properly. Let me take another another relay. I have here is the 5-volt version. I have another one here. Let me try this one. Or maybe I can put it on the 5-volt. Oh, this one is already 5-volt. It's already 5-volt. But it didn't respond properly. Ground. Oh, even the... The... Always high. The pin is always high. That's weird. Let me try another one. It's another type of relay. Uh, not another type of relay, another company from Tongling. All right. So this one positive, negative, uh, positive right in the middle, negative to the right, and signal to the left. Ah, this one is working. I think so. Yeah, this one is working. You can see the light there. It will turn on and off every five seconds. You can there's a LED there. Okay, off. Right. 
Uh, this is also another thing with electronics. Okay, certain electronics, like you, you expect them to behave the way that it's supposed to do, and it doesn't do that. So, yeah, be, you have to expect that. Okay, and you have that uh, inquisitive mind. Why it doesn't work? Finding a way to solve that problem. And it basically, I understand it, 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 it basically will add another layer of your programming um, understanding here. Like in normal programming, like it's just a software based programming, you can just directly solve the problem straight away through the software, through the codes and everything. You can change them. But hardware, it adds another layer, the hardware stuff, the hardware logic. Okay. So you have to, 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 to add that in mind. Okay. Now, I've changed to another uh, relay and it does seem to work properly. Doesn't doesn't seem to have any issue with that. Okay. So even I can just straight away test them, uh, what we call as connectivity test for the normally closed and normally open. So I can just use what we call as uh, the continuity uh, here. I just want to use the continuity. Where is it? In this one. Okay, continuity means that if I connected both of them, it's supposed to, this is online. All right, this one. Okay, so fully connected. So I can just use, um, there's a on, uh, there's a NC with communication. Okay, that's one is uh, normally, Close. So on, it close. Off is on. So another one. On is on. Off. So that's NC, CN, uh, normally close, normally open, and O. So very, very useful things here okay, to have. So do it lagi. <laughs> Tak boleh buat apa. Nothing. This is this is the this is the the the, 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 the things with uh, microcontroller. Tak boleh buat apa ya. Eh? Memang banyak duit pakai. Tapi just again anggap dia sebagai investment. Eh hey, ada soalan? Yes. Beli dari Shopee. Beli yang mana satu? Beli yang mana satu? Pun ada 3.3 volt dengan 5 volt atau 10 volt. Okay, okay, okay. Sebab kelahan ni dia automatik. Aku awak tak faham, bukan tak faham. Boleh lah nak gunakan dia. Um, tapi harga dia agak mahal sedikit. 40, 40 ringgit lah. Kami tu dah share tu. Uh, oh, the release switch and everything. Okay. So release switch dekat, dekat sini, this one, uh, this one from Tongling. Tongling should be okay lah. The one that you can see here that's already tested, <laughs> which means that it's working. So the label called Tongling. I'm not sure what it's Tongling means, but yeah, Tongling. Okay. Maybe the name of the owner, maybe. Okay, any question? Any other question? Hmm? Bot rate Bot rate? No, no, bot rate kita kena pilih uh, dia, dia lebih kepada serial communication Dia adalah speed of communication Between this and your computer Through serial connection uh, Bot rate, kita boleh pilih mana-mana bot rate Tapi kita kena tahu What is the highest speed uh, bot rate That this device can support This controller can support Kalau ESP, kita boleh tengok. ESP 32 tinggi. Okay, kita boleh search. Come on, nak boleh google je benda ni. Uh, okay, kita tengok. ESP 8266 max bot rate. Okay. Uh, bot rate yang dia boleh support, biasanya kita pakai uh, ESP as maximum bot rate of 40 times 11.5200. So, biasanya kita akan pakai bot rate 11.5200. Kita pakai yang tu. Uh, so, Kita boleh set higher, tinggi lagi. Tapi kebiasaannya kita akan pilih yang uh, yang minimum supaya dia stable. Sebab the higher the bot rate, if you mistakenly set them, 
uh, they somehow like uh, communication. Okay, digital communication. This is the digital communication. If you understand about discrete, or belajar discrete kan. So the discrete basically they just data like one zero one zero when you when you have like eight bits. So the eight bits and then uh, bila dihantar this uh, eight bit signal, if you set it too high, so the signal can be um, disrupted. You have like gibberish data. That's why you can see like gibberish data. You call it gibberish data. You can see like weird character appear on the screen. Okay, means that you have mis uh, communication between your serial USB port with the microcontroller. So if you set it too high, you might get issues. If you set it too low, also you might issues because they they don't have like synchronization, the discrete uh, synchronization between serial communication. Okay, so you need to understand first uh, the maximum baud rate that you can support. Like for ESP, ESP thirty two, max baud rate. So ESP can set to nine to two. It can operate at higher speed, bit per second. So it means that when you compile, you can run, it runs much, much faster. So ESP, they have like much, much faster processor compared to ESP8266. They have better speed. Okay. But better speed require more power. So power is very important when we talk about microcontroller. Because there's a trade-off. You have to understand about this. Like, uh, when people talk about microcontroller, why don't you use the highest and the greatest and the best microcontroller? No, there's no such thing of, uh, of that. It's based on the project. So if your project requires only to communicate uh, only like two or three sensors only, so ESP, you can just use ESP. Or if your project, you don't have to connect to Wi-Fi. There's no need for you to use ESP. You can just use like a simple uh, Arduino Uno. Okay. There's no such thing as the greatest microcontroller. No, nothing. It depends on the requirement. It always on the requirement. It basically goes the same with programming language. There's no such thing as the greatest and the best programming language out there. The best if you want to write like the closest to the hardware is less one and zero. So are you willing to write one and zero to, to through programming? Definitely no. Like the one that that our uh, that, that the first people that are writing the the, the using the, the 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 holes on the on the card there, and then you feed to the computer and the computer will read that holes as one and zero. That is one and zero programming uh, in the in the beginning, and then people tend to and then move to uh, assembly language. So they write assembly language. That's basically the closest to the hardware. So if you can write uh, assembly language, means that your software is very very fast. Are you willing to write assembly language? Just to write hello world will take you like one page of code. Just hello world. If you return this in assembly language. Okay. So there's no such thing of that, but it depends on the project that you want to visit. That's why it's very important at the early of the project, you have to identify what are the things that you need. You need to connect to internet, to Wi-Fi, ESP 8266, and you have, you, you can use uh, ESP 32. Our requirement. Okay, so you have to understand that uh, Wi-Fi, they use a lot of power. So when Wi-Fi boot up, uh, basically it will require like 200 milliampere, uh, just as what we call as a spike voltage when, when they start to connect to Wi-Fi, but they will go down to 70 milliampere. Okay, when they establish the, they establish the connection because you have the handshake and everything to the router, to the switch. Okay, so that's basically uh, communication. It depends on the type of microcontroller, like the one that we have here. Uh, ESP32, you can set a higher. You can choose the higher uh, bit per second. And then your ESP, if you compile to ESP, it is much, much faster compared to 8266. Slower because of bit per second here, the baud rate, communication baud rate. Okay, so that's the thing with uh, baud rate. All right, anything else? Okay, so here you can just uh, you can connect you can uh, you can uh, connect with like for example uh, with this and this and then you can uh, implement simple security system already with this. Okay, so you connected this to real uh, to 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 the sensor here. The sensor will detect something and on something. Okay, you you connect to fan or you connect to even a speaker alarm. Uh, or you can connect to um, to 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 whatever that you want with this relay because this is already two hundred forty relay. 
uh, volt uh, uh, EC. So any electronic, uh, any electric or electrical component or uh, that you can you can just connect them to this. But definitely you need to cut wire and then connect to NC and or, or N uh, and O. Okay, a little bit of uh, electron, uh, electrical there. All right. Okay, so you can combine them together, mix them together, and then uh, make it into a project. Okay. So this is basically one of output component. Why output? Because we put it digital right. Digital right will write a voltage um, to high or to low in reverse because this is a, a ESP. ESP always reverse. High is low, low is high. High means 3.3, uh, high means 0 0.1 voltage. Low means 3.3 .3 voltage. Okay. They are in reverse compared to the Arduino Uno. Uno high, high, low, low. But ESP, not sure why they put it, uh, they use the high, low method, but that is the thing that you have to understand with uh, ESP. Okay. All right. Um, siapa siapa yang dah beli dah dengan uh, dah sampai dah ESP? Tak sampai lagi. Tak dapat lagi. Five people already got. Okay. Dah sampai kat tangan. Tak bawa hari ni. Oh, ada dah. Oh, okay, okay. So, I boleh cubalah this one. So, kalau kata awak nak try, you want try now, get yourself experience um, to assemble them, to compile them, to get them ready. IDE semua dah ready. Arduino semua dah install. All the library, everything, all the required um, board, uh, board definition dah, dah, dah ada dah. Okay, so... You, do, you, you don't have to wait for me to give the instruction. Please install this, please install that. Uh, ini bukan level sekolah, ya? Level university, do it yourself. Awak saya tunjuk, awak boleh repeat balik benda tu. Okay, then even the, all the videos is there, also you can just follow them. Okay, uh, only that is you have any problem, then you can just discuss. Okay, do the discussion with your friends and everything. Tak boleh selesai, then cari saya. That's the way how I run my class. Okay. So this is not school. This is not spoon feed. This is university. Okay. You have to take action. You have to do a lot of self learning. I've shown you. Benda tu jalan. Confirm working. Okay. Kalau ada issue, macam tadi ada issue, a few, a few issues. I'll let you know the, the problem. But then, like, for example, the one that I mentioned. Um, ada ni, ada ni, macam mana nak combine dua ni? How do you combine them? So that's the thing that you can, you can try. Okay, give it a try. Can be done. Code dah ada. Just apply the logic. Uh, mungkin tu jadi-jadi assignment awak. Coming. Your first lab assignment. Okay, so. Jangan tunggu eh. Saya, saya selalu nampak. This is basically the problem with university student. Tunggu lecturer suruh. Uh, dengan kelas saya lain Siapa-siapa yang biasa uh, Tak pernah lagi sebab kelas computer science tak pernah attend kelas saya Kalau yang IT Dia pun biasa dah dengan saya The way that saya conduct kelas saya Jangan tunggu okay? Tunggu saya memang tak habis Tunggu saya, saya akan tunjuk kod saya Saya akan tunjuk-tunjuk But awak kena buat balik Jalan dah And then ubah And then sebab saya jenis Saya tak suka, saya tak bagi Style, saya rasa cakap dalam kelas Saya bagi, uh, saya, saya ajak awak satu campur dua tiga And then assignment awak, awak kena buat roket ke bulan uh, Itu bukan style saya lah Saya ajak awak dah, saya dah tunjuk dah Macam mana saya buat, macam mana saya execute, macam mana saya compile, macam mana saya buat all the things uh, But then you have to redo that And then you have to implement a different kind of logic a little bit that you can show Okay, this is basically the improvement that you have done through my code that I've shown to you, I've shared with you um, and then you are able to do something with the code. Okay, so totally different. Uh, and again, this is not one o one programming language. Saya tak jawab macam mana nak buat if, macam mana nak buat variable declaration, macam mana nak buat uh, looping ke, nak buat function ke, nak buat method ke, nak buat class ke. Ah, itu bukan class dia. Class tu dah lepas. Programming tu awak tak tahu dipanggil programming apa dalam kelas awak. Advanced programming code. Okay. So it should be okay lah dengan programming awak. Eh? So this one rather very simple one. 
awak boleh create function pun daripada sini so function katakan function untuk untuk kawal relay function untuk ambil input untuk return data so semua tu boleh buat okey awak boleh create create function panggil function pass data parameter and return uh, parameter uh, return data if required okey so that's the thing mungkin akan jadi assignment awak yang pertama okey so boleh kita teruskan ada soalan? Tanya. Servo, servo nantilah. Kemudian servo ni dia sama. Display. Okay, saya nak cakap berkenaan display. I want to talk about display. Um, I don't use this display anymore because this display called LCD screen. Uh, but the one that I use here is this type of screen, OLED screen. Okay, this is a little bit expensive compared to this one. But this one uh, is, is quite big. Size dia besar and then say off eh. all right so um this is also another output component uh which is um oled display so the oled display uh basically allow you to display data lah very easily uh clearly uh but this will require additional pin okay so you have your ground you have your vcc but you have there are two additional pins called sda and slc pin okay so this is uh all that but it basically function the same with this one uh, apart that this one can only print out two line uh two line of text um at the top at the bottom down here uh but the size is quite big and quite bulky so if you want to use in a project that require uh this kind of display should be fine because this one is much cheaper i think less this one is less than 10 ringgit uh, but the one that I, uh, the one that you use here, it'll be like uh, 12 ringgit, is it? How, how much is 13 ringgit? Uh, OLED display. 10 ringgit. I think that, that, that's the standard one that you use, like, like this one. So this one is, uh, is it like 10 ringgit. So this one like 7 ringgit. Okay, but this one is rather bulky. But the program basically the same. Okay, so um, for the display, uh, yeah, do I have uh, all that here? Oh, this one is already IoT programming. So later we're going to learn about how to connect to the Wi-Fi, how to read, uh, how to send data over Wi-Fi, how to store data into database, how to read back the data from our application from the database. So okay, that one for later. So I'm going to move to the LED first, and then work from there. OLED screen. So this one is ASP, Pandu, Namnam, OLED. But OLED is a little bit elusive in terms of the library. There are quite a number of libraries out there. But the one that I use a lot and I use uh, in my project, I, I kind of forgot which one, which library that I use. Uh, the one from, uh, there are two somehow like uh, main reference that I normally go to, either a random nerd tutorial or from the last minute engineer um usually comes from them because uh, from the from this guy here from the random net there's so many tutorial available from from there so like for example like this one the one that they use here um uh, basically use the same connection as mine um and this one is 0 0.96 or like this basically this one this is 0 0.96 inch Okay, uh, it being able to uh, to output uh, 128 times 64 pixel uh, density, uh, and it comes with four pins. Okay, two for power and the other two for communication. Um, it doesn't require backlight, which results in very nice contrast in light and very uh, And there, there's also a version that comes in color, but the one that I have here is blue LED. So they are also comes in yellow, blue. I think the other one is red. Forgot the white. Yeah, white. Sorry, white. Okay. Um. All right. Wiring is very simple. For ESP eighty two six. So VIN. Uh, it require three point three volt. Uh, ground and ground. Uh, for uh communication between display and microcontroller for ESP. Uh, you can connect it to D one and D two. Uh, D1 and D2, basically, it came with uh, double operation. Uh, if you look at the pinout for ESP, so one for SCL, one for SDA, actually. 
So it means that you can just uh, directly use them without having to define them because it double uh, as both operation. Okay, so it uses uh, I square C, I2C. Okay, they call it I2C communication protocol. Um, mostly suitable for I2C communication is ASP, which is uh, you can use either uh, GPIO 5 and also GPIO 4. So there's also another pins available on the ESP that, that, that it can be used with that. Um, there's also another version of OLED that use SPI. So sometimes they quite, quite um, even for me, sometimes like to identify either this one use I, I square C or this one use SPI. So you might need to get a different look at it. Um, there are two versions. Okay. The one that use I square C and the one that use SPI. So you have to, to, to look into that. Okay, the library, uh, but I don't use Adafruit library. Okay, the Adafruit library sometimes doesn't work with uh, my OLED screen. So you might need to choose or to try them first. If you have this vision or you have that vision. But let's just follow this first and let's see if you manage to get them to work. Okay. Um, this one, uh, the, the, the they call it the test code. So I'm not going to use that test code uh, straight. This is just to print out hello world. Okay, this one's quite short. So just to print out hello world. So this one use Adafruit library. So let's try to use Adafruit library uh, from a uh, random net tutorial. So this guy names Rui Santos. So I'm going to take this one. Just easy, just take the code, okay? Okay, I'm going to create new project. Okay, so I'm not quite sure if I already installed this library or not. So let's try to look at the library. So just, just put in S S D one three zero six. So the library called S S D one three zero six, uh, from the Adafruit. So the one that I already have in this one, we call it Adafruit, and I'm already installed version uh, two point five point nine. So install. So you can see there, install. So there, as you can see, there is a lot of uh, other library available from Acrobotic. Um, this is for Emolator. This one for Vmos Mini uh, OLED. So they have different version also. So many of them. Okay. So I have already, uh, the one that I use a lot is this version. Uh, because this one, I have, I built my own function, my own method of display my data. So I use this one. But let's try to use the one that uh, normally being used by other people. Okay. Right. So the so many. Okay. But the one that I always use either from other fruit, but other fruit I use for tutorial purposes only. But for most of my project, I use the other version. I use the one that from where is it? Ah, this one. Uh, this one already comes with ESP32, okay, but they use different example, like the one that I have here. This one drawing demo, UI demo, simple demo. So this is basically the one that they have. Uh, uh, when you install a library, this one I forgot to mention. Uh, when you install your library, usually they comes with example, code example. So which means that you can just use them directly. Um, so like the one from Adafruit here, the one that I already installed, if you click on them, Oh, sorry, this one uninstall. Um, you click here, yeah. you can see example. You can see the, the code that they have here. So you can choose uh, if you want to use the I, I square C or you want to use the SPI. So usually SPI, they have uh, more pins. Uh, for I, I square C, there's only like four pins, two for power, two for the SCK and SDA. Okay, but the other one, the SPI, they come with a lot of other pins. So you have to you have to choose wisely, and even it comes with different sizes. And this one is for 128 times 64, and this one times uh, 128 times 32. So this is basically the screen resolution si uh, size. Okay, you have to also understand that. So the one that from Adafruit, okay, this is basically the codes from Adafruit. 
So it will only print out hello world. Um, and this one just to check if the connection is okay or not. And this is just to create a display object. Uh, and with the passing parameter, the screen width, uh, this one is 64, means that I need to change this at 32. 32. I believe the one that I use is 32. Smaller version. Okay, so let's see this first. The head is 32. This one, so I'm going to save them. Put it into my OneDrive. Uh, no, into, oh no, no, sorry, it's not that one. Uh, again, there's no Arduino there. Yep. Um, let's get sensor. Uh, this one is OLED example. Is it saving to time? OLED example. Okay, so this is the uh, This is basically the example from uh, Rui Santos. Uh, and let's see the connection first. I forgot to check the connection. So check the pins connection. Okay, this one. So it connected to D1 and D2. So D1 to SDA, uh, D2 to SCK. So it means that if you look at your uh, display, so you have SCK there. So SCK to D1. So SCK connected to D1, yes. SDA connected to uh, D2, yes. Okay, D2. Power, I've taken this power from 3.3 .3 to ground. Okay, so this is basically the same. Okay, this is basically the same. Okay, so it means that I just jump. This is why, why they call it the jumper cable, jumper wire. So they jump connection. Uh, and maybe I do, I, I haven't yet talked talk about uh, this breadboard. So the way that you use the breadboard, sometimes you're quite... Kalau yang tak biasa guna breadboard ni mungkin agak confusing jugalah. So let me just show you how to use it first. Uh, let me show you through freezing because freezing also got like a breadboard. Yeah. Okay, so uh, when you have your breadboard, so the top uh, top section here, as you can see, when you connect, when you connect, so it basically light up. Means that all these basically they're all connected. They're all connected. They're all one line. Okay, they're all one line. So it means that whatever that you connected here, or any component that you connected here, will get or will basically the same line, the same power, uh, uh, the same connection. The second one also the same. At the bottom also the same. There. Okay. Um, if for the center center line here, they're all connected vertically. So. You can see there, they're all connected in one line. Also the same with this, the same with this. At the bottom, also the same. Okay, one is horizontal, the other one is vertical. So whatever that you connected, they are basically connected in that way. So if I put something like, I'm not quite sure if they got ESP8266 here, the, the full, uh, the non-MCU version, I already imported them. Why is that my not dragging them into? Why is not wool? Jalan pula. Cuba tengok. Tak tahu ibu blok siapa dah. Saya punya ESP saya sudah ada sebelah sana. Tapi saya ada dia punya. This one is the display. I want the freezing. Ah, the, oh, tapi this one is WeMOS version. Okay, this is WeMOS version. I want the ESP eighty two. No, this one is the uh, this is the uh, mat, bare naked uh, bare metal version. This is the uh, WeMOS version. WeMOS D one version. If you want to develop like a smaller um, smaller project, so you can use the WeMOS version. Uh, this is the Spark, uh, uh, Spark Fun version of ESP, but I can import ESP 826 freezing file. ESP known MCU freezing download. I can just import them. Don't use Lolin. Um, how many times I, I tell you because sometimes someone contact me and then show me Lolin. 
don't use Lolin. Lolin is it's not friendly uh, on, on what we call a breadboard. So let me just download this one first. I hope this is the PCB side. This one is not MCU freezing. This one. This is a freezing. Okay. I'm going to download this one. And then I'm going to import this here. Um, freezing ESP8266 Wi-Fi module 12E. See this one? Oh, no. Again, this is the same one. Uh, import. Import ESP node MCU. Okay, this one. All right, this one. Okay, so this is basically the one. So if I put it on here, yeah. like, okay, so you can see there, but you can see there's only like a few left, only one, uh, uh, one uh, connection left. So you can use the left and the right one. So if you want to connect to like, for example, uh, do I have uh, a display OLED. Do I have OLED here? But I don't have this version. This is the... It can be used, but you can see that there's SDA, as SLK, VCC ground. So if I wanted to connect them, I cannot just connect them like this one. So this is totally wrong. Okay, so you don't do this because they are basically on the on the same line. So you need to rotate them 90 degree and then put them like that. But this one, I don't think that they are connected properly on the breadboard uh, because they didn't light up. It's supposed to light up. So not this version. So I might need to find the correct version. Uh, OLED display. I think this one is 1306. Or oh, this one also like 64. Is it this one? There's a freezing. Okay, let me just try download this first. And import them into project. Import them. Import. Download. OLED. Yes, I think this is the one. Yeah, I think this is the one. So if I put like this one. Okay, this is correct. Okay, so like you can see like it basically light up all the color there. It's a, a green. So it means that you, you can connect this to that. Okay. Any question on this? Line, horizontal line. Okay, so if I want to connect them, so let me just... Susah saya guna, saya guna tengah ni, saya guna mouse juga. Saya zoom. Tak boleh zoom. Zoom. Mana saya zoom. Saya nak zoom. Biasa saya boleh double. Boleh ni. Tapi dia tak boleh pula. Dia tak apa. Okay so kalau ni. Saya tak ada mouse saya tinggal kat nombor satu. So, senang duduk kat sini. Saya boleh ambil apa saja saya nak. Sebab saya dia boleh melibatkan barang. Eh. Kalau programming software saja tak apa. Ini hardware. So, bila hardware dia akan menjadi sedikit masalah. Ha, tu. Di zoom. Center zoom. Ha. Okay. Boleh ya? Eh? So, tengok VCC. So, kalau saya nak jump dia. VCC, saya boleh tarik VCC ke VCC 3.3. Saya boleh tarikkan dia ke 3.3 yang tu. So, tu dah connect. So, saya nak tarik ground. Saya boleh tarik ground. Saya boleh tarik ke ground. Dekat sini. Nak tukar color boleh lah sebab kadang dia bertindih kan. So, kita tukar color. Katakan yang ni VCC. Uh, VCC color merah. Saya so, tukarlah. Ambil color merah. Red. Kalau nak color lain. Uh, boleh. So, kalau katakan dia nampak macam. Kalau kata awak nak jump. Oh, ini satu lagi. Sebab biasanya uh, voltage kita akan jump. So kalau nak jump, kita boleh jump. Kita akan jump positif kat luar. Eh? Positif kat luar, negatif kat dalam. So saya jump ke sini. And then positif saya jump ke sini. Eh, uh, yang ni adalah ground. So saya akan tukar uh, red. Uh, ni black. Hmm. Ni black, ini red. So means that, tengok kat atas ni dah color. So means that yang ni 3.3, yang ni ground. So kalau saya nak ambil power, saya boleh ambil terus daripada sini saja terus. 
uh, yang ni VCC kan, VCC ni sepatutnya red and then ground, so tarik ground ground adalah black uh, just colouring saja. Oh, tu tak nampak cantik, so saya akan tarik sikit ke sini sebab dia, dia tak, tak cantik, so saya kena susun balik delete saya suka kemas dia kalau kita voltage ground, voltage ini okey nampak cantik dia ground, kita tarik ke ground, ground adalah bawah bagi dia tengah positif, tarik ke atas ok so dia crank lah ok so kalau ada banyak komponen lain kita bolehlah sambung ke atas terus instead of kita ambil dari situ kita boleh tarik dari atas terus kalau tak sampai bawah kita boleh tarik pula ni ke bawah dan so bawah ni ada lagi kosong so boleh tarik juga ke sana so yang bawah ni kalau ada lagi komponen lain lah cuma bear in mind maximum 200 milli ampere amp draw dia tak boleh lebih daripada tu apa-apa saja yang lebih you have to make sure that you have external power supply external power supply tu biasanya awak boleh ambil daripada uh, VIN ni sebab VIN ni dia datang daripada kabel USB ni tapi awak kena tahu awak punya USB port ni kalau yang uh, kalau yang apa ni version yang baru yang USB 3 power dia tinggi so awak tak worry sangatlah sebab uh, voltage dia tinggi tapi awak punya output dia adalah 5 volt bukan 3.3 so awak kena step down kan dia dia ada satu plug dia panggil step down yang saya tunjuk tadi tu dia ada step down so awak kena ambil step down punya komponen turunkan dia ke 3.3 volt and so setengah-setengah tu dia tak friendly dengan 5 volt uh, so kalau awak boh juga dia terbakar ok so kena hum yang tu alright so kalau SCL tadi dia kata tadi SCL pergi ke kita ada dekat sini ya, eh. saya duduk kat sini eh. so kat sini D1 dengan D2 ok so D1 dengan D2 sambung lah dia kena jauh sikit lah, panjang sikit lah kabel dia ok dia akan tarik ke sana so SCL tadi ke bawah apa um, dia akan pergi SCK D1 SCK D1 kan, SCK kadang dia panggil SCL, kadang dia panggil SCK so SDA dia panggil, yang ni dia panggil SDA SDA kat luar, okay, SDA kat luar dia akan pergi ke D2 dia ni akan pergi ke D2, so kita tarik ke D2 ok, so tukar colour lah yang ni ikutlah, kita colour sebab dia ada dua, nak ambil colour yellow boleh yang ni dia akan pergi ke D1 macam tu, ha, yang ni awak nak susun nak bagi nampak cantik sikit Ha, ni colour lain lah. Saya jenis suka kalau kita colour ni colour orange. Kita ambil colour orange. So bagilah susun. Ini cuma cabling. Kan? Ya. Yeah. Yang free. Eh, yang tu saya tak. Saya ada yang free. Ini tu saya share yang free dia. Yang older version dia. Yang new version awak kena compile sendiri. Dia dah bagi. Awak boleh masuk dalam github dia. Yang latest version. Tapi latest version ni kadang-kadang sebab yang free version sebelum ni license dia dia dah tolong compile kat kita siap-siap. Tapi yang open source version kita kena compile sendiri. Dia free, dia masih free. Tapi kena buat kerja sikitlah. Ah oh, sebab dia open source. Okey sebab dia open source. Okey. So an bagilah nak bagi nampak kemas sikit. Ha macam tu. Nampak kemas so sikit kan? So nanti kalau terus skematik pun sama juga. Skematik ni awak kena awak kena tarik-tarik sikit lah. And then awak boleh pergi ke PCB. PCB ni awak boleh buat auto route sebenarnya. Ha, dia buat auto routing. <laughs> so dia akan automatik cari route supaya dia tak bertindih. Dia ada top dengan bottom. So macam contoh top ni tak kena kan. Ha, Okey lah. Tapi kalau bottom ni, ha, ini yellow ni maksudnya dia duduk di bottom bottom PCB. Dia ni top PCB. So kalau kita buat routing, kita boleh check dia punya apa nama um, design rules dia. So design rules dia akan beritahu, oh ada yang overlapping, check lagi sekali. So ada yang overlapping dekat mana, wire. So nampak kalau, de de kalau yang dekat sangat tu, kita masih lagi boleh check apa nama, uh, dia tak dia tak sempurna. Kadang tu dia okey, kadang dia tak okey. Tapi kadang-kadang biasanya saya suka buat sendiri je. Saya akan drag 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 sendiri, bagi dapat okey ni routing dekat sini, dan saya akan DRC check. So kalau saiznya besar sangat PCB saya, saya akan kecilkan dia. Lepas tu kalau rasa awak nak nak letak nama awak, boleh letak nama awak kat bawah ni. Lepas tu siap, hantar pergi China, settle. Dapat sini PCB awak sendiri. 
Boleh lah awak brag kat kawan-kawan. Kan. Lepas tu awak design sikit lah 3D printer, casing dia tu. Awak produk lah. Lengkap. Kan. Itu yang budak-budak dekat. Ni sebarang saya cerita pula dalam ni. Budak-budak selalu dekat. <laughs> dekat Unimap. Budak-budak engineering. Budak-budak electronic engineering. Sebelum ni saya banyak evaluate projek dia orang. Projek dia orang banyak pakai PCB je. Eh pakai ni je. Pakai pakai breadboard je. Masih lagi jam 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 kabel. Lepas tu saya kutuk lah. Kutuk come on lah. Sekarang zaman sekarang ni mudah nak buat benda ni. Zaman dulu ya lah. Uh, kalau sebelum ni kalau awak nak buat sesuatu PCB tu. Awak kena belajar etching. Pernah buat etching tak? Tak pernah buat etching. Etching ni dia pakai chemical. Awak kena print awak punya design dulu. Uh, atas awak punya kertas kertas color tu dia ada transfer transfer paper dia panggil so transfer paper tu awak akan print dia dulu atas tu awak akan cari copper board awak kena gosok copper board tu licin-licin dulu apa tu awak guna iron awak guna iron letakkan tekapkan atas dia dia akan transfer trace tu copper trace tu dia akan transfer ok kemudian awak akan potong pada segi tu awak akan letak dia ada dalam apa nama larutan uh, untuk dia buang all the copper Uh, so and then uh, dah habis tu awak akan gosok balik and then awak akan make sure trace tu tak putus. Penat lah. Saya ada dia punya chemical dia ada dalam bilik tu. Chemical untuk buat PCB board sendiri. PCB board saya pun ada yang original dia. Ada lagi. Okay, so daripada sini, ini adalah flow dia. Biasanya this is basically the flow. So kalau kita design ni, biasanya kita akan try connection kita dulu. And then um, kita akan pergi kepada schematics. Schematics ni pun apa nama, biasanya kita akan susun balik lah. Sebab dia tak, kadang-kadang dia tak buat auto. Kadang-kadang dia boleh buat auto. Uh, auto route. Kadang-kadang dia boleh auto route. Kadang-kadang dia tak boleh. Dan, tapi bergantung pada jenis. Macam ni auto route okey lah. Dan, saya buat auto route tadi. Ha, ni schematic design dia. Okay, kemudian bila saya pergi kepada PCB. Saya boleh buat lagi auto route dia. Ha, tapi auto route dia tak perfect. Kadang-kadang dapat elok, kadang-kadang dapat tak elok. Kadang-kadang kita kena buat sendiri juga. Dia ada overlapping juga. And ada homebrew production type lah. Macam-macam. Kadang-kadang dapat, kadang-kadang tak dapat. Nah, lepas tu kalau kita chat lagi sekali DRC dia ah tu banyak bertindih lagi tak sempurna nah, so kadang-kadang saya buat sendiri je nah, tapi biasanya step kita start daripada breadboard so kalau kita nak produce PCB kita akan pergi kepada schematics and then uh, biasanya kita akan pergi ke PCB kita akan hasil file geber kita bagi geber file okay, geber file so geber file ni kita akan zip hantar ke Biasa ni saya suka hantar dekat um, apa nama bukan PCB way PCB manufacturer saya JL uh, PCB ah uh, ini favorite saya JL PCB saya, saya ada ada account dengan 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 dia orang kat sini so, macam boleh buat dekat sini nak buat biasa saya buat dua layer aja Eh, bukan, bukan. Yang PCB PCB yang saya etching pakai chemical tu. Ha. Okay. JL PCB. So saya punya order history saya. Ha, tu. Tu projek-projek sebelum ni saya pernah buat. Saya hantar. Macam-macam design ada. Okay, ni yang terbaru lah. Ini yang terbaru, PCB yang saya hantar yang terbaru ni, SP32 punya uh, board. Okay, saya design pakai freezing lah. Saya design dan design, and then saya akan hantar ke sini, and then seminggu dapat. Ha, ni harga per board RM3 macam tu, lebih kurang. Saya boleh jual RM10 satu. Pakai shipping lah. Uh, so, uh, Biasanya saya akan print banyak. Saya akan print 50 keping macam contoh. Sebab dia punya harga shipping dia untuk setengah kilo. 
So dia dah limit yang tu. So kalau kata saya kalau kata saya buat 50 keping tu um, 120 ringgit. 120 ringgit sekali dengan printing apa semua. So okeylah. Alamak. Okey, boleh je lambat sikit je nak load. Kadang tu. Saya beli kat sini lah, saya beli. Saya buat. Okey. So ini just untuk visualize. Untuk visualize saja eh. So kalau nak visualize kita boleh gunakan macam ni dan ini adalah breadboard dan macam ni nak guna breadboard. Okey, faham ah? Guna breadboard. Dan simple je sebenarnya. Cuma masalah dengan breadboard ni dia cuma ada tinggal satu saja pin yang boleh kita gunakan. Ha, sebab saya dia agak besar. Tapi kalau awak nak gunakan dua pin sebenarnya awak boleh cabut ni. Eh. Awak nak kalau nak besarkan dia, dia punya tepi ni kita boleh tanggalkan. Dia kita boleh sambung lagi dengan dengan bread yang lain. Ha, so dia ada double. So kalau boleh besarkan lagi lah. Ha, so kalau katakan awak nak cukup awak boleh combine dua ni. So awak boleh gunakan tengah-tengah ni tapi power ni cabut. Dia boleh ditanggal ni sebelah ni. Ni, ni boleh tanggal. So sambungkan dengan satu lagi kat sini, letak sebelah dia. So boleh expand size dia. Senang je. Ha. Ha. Tu je. Boleh je. Tapi saya saya tak suka guna breadboard ni. Bukan tak suka pasal apa. Sebab nak tanggal dia bayar. Ni. Ni tanggal dia ketat. So once awak letak ni, kalau awak nak tanggal, awak kena pegang dua jari ni. Awak kena pegang kat ujung ni dua-dua. And then awak, okay, awak wiggle, 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 wiggle sikit. Bukan patah, dia bengkok. Bengkok, bila dia bengkok tu awak kena straighten balik pin dia. Hmm. Macam tu je, bukan apa isu dia. Cuma saya tak suka. Saya suka direct, direct, direct. And then saya dah okay, saya buat PCB saya, saya hantar China and then dapat balik kat saya. And then saya solder balik. Tak tahu sama ada saya sempat nak ajar awak soldering atau tak. Solder ni satu skill yang kena build. Orang elektronik kena build lah, kena belajar lah soldering ni. Hopefully sempat saya ajar awak untuk buat solder. Solder ni dia kena dapat bukit cantik tu. Dia kena dapat triangle cantik tu. Ha. Dia ada satu pin kat atas tu kita dapat triangle cantik. So bila kita pegang tu, kita just tap 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 tap. Ha, kita dapat. Ha. So kita dapat dia punya bukit cantik tu. Kadang-kadang orang punya sampai sampai besar-besar, blok-blok besar-besar tu. Ha. So tu tak kena ada. Ha. Dia dah terlebih, dia overheat ataupun dia terlebih ni. Ada. Ini yang saya punya. Mungkin yang, yang ni, yang kan yang saya etching tu. Etching PCB board saya kan dah tulis apa MC, MC maker board. Yang ni yang yang kita hantar print print China tu. Uh, yang warna coklat tu. PCB warna coklat yang ha, saya rasa saya ada lagi hal lama tu. Saya ada simpan lagi PCB tu. Dia saya pakai copper board tu. Yang copper board tu. Copper board tu yang saya etching pakai chemical tu. Pernah buat, pernah buat etching tak? Tak pernah buat etching? Oh, ni orang diploma engineering ni. <laughs> Dia pun tak nak buat etching. <laughs> tak nak buat etching eh? Okey, tak nak buat etching. Maksud saya lebih lagi lah. <laughs> tak nak buat etching tak apa. PCB etching tu warna coklat. Memang saya cari lah. So, etching, um, tapi ni saya buat single layer saja lah sebab daripada layer banyak nampak susunan dia sebab single layer so dia dekat bawah. So, uh, PCB board ni saya kena drill balik semua sendiri uh, and then uh, dia ada copper trace saya panggil dalam ni, copper trace dia. So, copper trace uh, and then uh, lubang kena drill sendiri and then solder. Okay, tapi ni yang saya buat ni pun dah asal dah 10 tahun dah asalnya. Pada lama dah solder ni. Ha, ini solder sendiri. Ya yeah, tapi tu lah sebab kan dia tak ada dia punya solder paste dia yang ni dia tak dapat cantik masa saya awal saya buat dulu lah. Dia ni pun masa saya belajar buat belajar buat etching lah. Um, tapi uff, penat. 
Nak buat realiti. Tapi ini adalah orang kata kalau dalam engineer, dalam elektronik engineering, skill ni kena ada. Kena boleh buat. Tapi awak tak payah buat lah. Saya tak suruh lah awak buat benda ni. Dan, cuma kalau kata awak nak buat juga tu sebagai proses pembelajaran tu boleh. Sebab chemical tu saya ada. Cuma nak buat dia agak renyah sikit. Sebab awak tak nak copper trace dia putus. Awak kena make sure bila awak transfer awak punya uh, ink pada board ni. Make sure dia transfer semua. Kalau dia yang putus tu awak kena pakai marker untuk sambungkan balik. Sebab dia tak 100% uh, garanti. Okay. Okay. Tak mana dah kita. Oh tak ni. Okay. Yang ni dia boleh code tapi saya tak pasti dia code sebagai apa sebab dia dia tak ada ESP tu yang masalah dia. So kalau jadi ESP okey sebab dia by default freezing ni bukan dibuat untuk ESP. ESP tu orang saja yang buat masukkan file dia tapi compiler dia semua tak ada dalam ni. Dan dia cuma ada untuk Arduino saja. Arduino base board. Kalau ESP dia tak boleh coding kat sini. Tu so, sebab kenapa saya tak guna ni? Kalau tidak, saya boleh guna dah. Dan cuma dia tak ada. So bila dia tak ada tu saya tak boleh, tak boleh nak tunjuk macam mana saya nak coding secara virtual dekat sini. Okay, yeah, so alright. Okay, so ini adalah uh, diagram dia. Nah, saya boleh ambil lah. Diagram ni saya boleh guna untuk saya boleh simpan lah. Nanti saya lupa pula. Uh, yang ini simpan dekat mana saya nak simpan ni. Saya pakai stop dulu lah. Um, ESP OLED. Oops. Sebab dia online punya location dia tak bagi. Simpan dalam desktop Um, simpan dekat sini lah Safe Simpan dulu Okay 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 So save Sekolah 8 minit dah Kosong lagi tak Dan sambung Tapi ni saya dah buat projek saya yang lagi satu tu So display tu jalan Okay, so display tu ada dah. Uh, tapi saya nak cuba yang hello world ni saja. Hello ni saja. Okay. Saya cuba compile. So biasanya kita akan pilih port number. Node MCU 1.0 port number 3. Uh, awak nak verify, boleh verify dulu. Sebab bila verify ni dia akan check sama ada library ni okay atau tak. Okay. Dia boleh compile tak dengan library ni. Kalau dia tak boleh compile, dia akan tunjuk error. Kalau dia boleh compile, dia kata okay. So tak ada masalah dengan library ni. Uh, dia boleh compile. So bila dia boleh compile, kita boleh upload. Ada flash size dia 4 meg. Dia punya internal storage dia 4 meg. So dia boleh simpan data yang banyak lah. Tapi RAM dia kecil. Uh, RAM, uh, RAM dia okey lah, usable lah. Dia ada beza RAM dengan EEPROM. EEPROM tu adalah storage yang boleh kita tulis kod dalam dia. Dan dia punya uh, operating system dia duduk dalam tu. Dia ada operating system tapi very micro punya operating system. Ya, yeah, tu ada hello world. Oh, Kecil lah. Itu uh, kita lah kena adjust uh, set size dia, text size dia. Tapi ada. Ada tu eh. Ada kat sini. Hello world. Okay. Hello world. So simple. Yang ni pun sebab dah lama. Saya punya screen saya ni pun dah kadang-kadang je dah ada, ada satu tu je dah tak nampak dah, 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 dah ni. Sebab lama sangat dah. Dah 10 tahun dah screen tu. So ni pun lama dah saya beli ni. Masa saya tubuhkan lab ni dulu. Okay so arahan ni pun simple. Kalau kata kat sini ini adalah semua library yang diperlukan. Okay ini adalah screen size. Oh, tapi saya rasa mungkin sebab dia sepatutnya 64. Tak, saya tak pasti. Dia 64 ke 32. Kadang-kadang saya pun terlupa. Saya try 64 tengok. Mungkin sebab dia tu dia akan dia shrink. Saya cuba tengok kalau saya besarkan sikit tu. Dia kena rajin lah sebab kena tunggu kan. Eh. Nak compile tunggu, compile tunggu, compile tunggu. So siapa yang tak cukup sabar tu. This can be susah lah. Okay, they require additional time for you to compile. And run and wait. And do it over again. Ha, ni ha, ni okey sikit kot. Tapi teks dia agak kecil lah, 10. Dia, dia kecil tapi dia...
tax dia aspect ratio dia tak tak ni kalau awak dah besar kan saya rasa tax size dia ni mungkin saya rasa nak kena tax size dia dua Uh, yang ni tax color white ni dia tak boleh sebab dia biru. So dia biru je birulah. Ada uh, setengah-setengah tu dia boleh combine dua color. Uh, ikut version yang kita beli. Kalau dia mahal sikit tu saya rasa dia boleh buat dual color. Yang ni harga murah so dia satu color je. So kena check balik specification dia. Bila awak beli tu check oh ini dual color, triple color, single color, white saja. Ah uh, tu besar sikit. Tapi dia dia turun ke second line lah. Sebab saya dah besar sikit. Okay, so kita kena atur betul-betul lah. Setiap kali kita nak print tu, kita kena make sure berapa tax yang kita boleh letak dekat situ. Okay. So sebab dia very limited. Yeah, so ini hello world. So LD tu duduk kat bawah. Okay, sebab size tax 2. Okay, kalau size tax 1 kecil. Size tax 2 besar sangat. So mungkin ada 1.5 ke, saya tak pasti lah. Itu kena check boleh dia punya tax ke sekala tax size ni. So kat sini um, ada fruit ni, ni adalah objek dia, dia set screen width, screen height. Ini digunakan wire, uh, I square C, wire and then negative one ni saya tak pasti dia pass parameter pada, display, uh, pada SSD ni lah. Uh, set up, uh, ini display saja. Yang ni je nak check sama ada communication tu berlaku atau tak dengan display. Kalau display tak return apa-apa, maksudnya dia akan for loop forever. Tu adalah for loop dia. Okay, for loop forever. For forever tu maksudnya dia akan stuck dekat situ. So yang tu awak boleh tengok dalam serial monitor lah. So dalam serial monitor ni kalau kata ada isu dengan display dia akan start dekat sini dan dia akan bagi tahu. So this is uh, SSD 1306 allocation fail. Maksudnya uh, allocation uh, communication between uh, your SSD 1306 tak berjaya. Okay. So you have to make sure that uh, either you check your connection back. So means that if you have having this issue, you need to check your connection. Sometimes you're in reverse. If in reverse communication cannot happen okay uh, the other one the, the, uh, the rest is just a function okay clear set text size text color set cursor and then if you want to print out display dot print line uh, display dot display you want to display the, the the text okay so that's it so is that loop nothing because i just want to display one text only so if you want to display something so you can just create function Another function like at the bottom right here. Uh, if you didn't return anything, just uh, void um, um, show screen or show uh, show data, show data function. Um, and then you can just take whatever that you have up here. Uh, display clear, clear the display first. Um, and then text color, you can, you, you can set only one time. So just set one time. White, no, no need for the text color because there's no color for this, only one color. So just set that one and then set text cursor at 0, 1, 10. Should be print out. All right, so we clear this. This one set cursor at 0, 10. So if you want to print on second line, so we can use, uh, I think, like set cursor 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, 10. So that's basically the location that you want to print out. And then to, to print out, just call object and then call print line. Print line means that to print line, the serial communication to the display uh, will print on here, not on your screen, but here. It's called print line. Okay. And then display dot display. Finally, you want to uh, to, to show the data, display dot display, it will display. So if you want to clear, you start with clear. And then you can use uh, location where you want to print. Uh, and then you can just um, maybe here you can just a string um data or string uh, whatever here like a b c d it's up to you uh, and then if you want to print out um display of print line so you just take a uh, display of print line uh print line a um, and then display dot display display dot display so you might want to put like um, delay, small delay, like 100 millisecond. Um, and then whatever data that you want to show, you can put it inside your loop. Uh, if you want to generate like random data, you can create random data, string random data. And then you can just call the function so data and then you pass, uh, pass the value, pass your string, whatever. Okay, put it there. Uh, this is basically whatever that you want to, 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 to show. And it will pass to show data, and then it will keep keep clear the display, 
where you want to display the data and then print the data and then display the data again and delay one second. Okay, so those are basically just function that you can call and then inside loop here, you can you can just give instruction to print out a random number or whatever user input that you want to 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 receive. Okay, this is just a basic function. Okay. All right. Any question on this? It's, uh...